Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Domine ut videam, Lord, that I may see. Sin has damaged our spiritual sight. We cannot see. Our bodies can see with our eyes of flesh, but our souls are blind. Our intellect is obscured and cannot understand the truth. Sin is like a blindfold, a veil on our eyes. We fail to grasp what matters most. First, the malice of sin, which is an offense against God, God to whom we owe everything. Combined with this, we fail to see the bounty of God. If God were a very harsh master, we would still owe him everything, but perhaps we would be less inclined to acknowledge it because he would be harsh. But on the contrary, God is good. God is bounty itself. And we fail to see that. We fail to see our moral incapacitation, the fact that we are totally incapable of any good unless God comes to our help and through his grace will inspire us and strengthen us to act according to his will, that is, according to virtue, which is also the path of true happiness for all men. We fail to see the need for expiation, the need for reparation for so many sins, reparation offered by a man on behalf of all men. We fail to see that this man is the Lord Jesus and that he wrought our redemption through his passion and cross when he died for us on Good Friday. We fail to see how totally indebted we are to our Lord, that there is no salvation but through him and specifically through his sufferings on our behalf. As the prophet Isaiah told us, chapter 53, verse 5, by his stripes we are healed. It is the sacred wounds of our Lord, which are the gates for our return into friendship with God the Father. By his stripes we are healed. So dear friends, the blind man in today's gospel very much stands for the human race as a whole fallen after the sin of Adam and Eve. 
The blind man by the wayside very much stands for each single one of us believers and unbelievers. Because if those who so far have not adhered to Christ and church find it difficult or perhaps impossible to see what I have just said, none of us believers can say that he sees well enough. We were all, we would all be great saints if we saw what we should see, but we are spiritually blind, even us who believe. And so let us look at the man in the gospel. Let us try and be a witness to that wonderful miracle, the healing of the blind man by our Lord. He cannot see, but he can hear. He hears voices, a crowd, praises, songs, exclamations. He realizes there is something unusual happening. He realizes that, perhaps as he heard before the rumor, this rabbi of Nazareth is walking by. And perhaps then that is his chance to beg for healing. So the dispositions in the heart of this man, although by then it might be a bit selfish, his well-being and perhaps nothing much more. But still he recognizes that he is in need and that probably the rabbi of Nazareth is the solution to his problem. And so he shouts and shouts again and he starts confessing that rabbi of Nazareth as more than merely a rabbi. He calls him with the messianic title son of David. That is confessing that the man walking by is more than a wise rabbi, a teacher of the law. No, he is indeed the one announced by the prophets, the one bringing salvation. And he asks for mercy. Son of David, have mercy on me. And then what happens? Does our Lord walk to him? No, and that's interesting. If you read it again, as I'm sure you will later today in your meditation, you see that our Lord stands still and asks his apostles to bring the man to him. Now that's very interesting because it is announcing what will be the role of the church in relation to those who as yet do not know Christ. The bishops, the priests, deacons, and every baptized he is appointed by God in various capacities as ministers of the good news. We must go out to the people and facilitate an encounter between them and Christ. We must, like in today's gospel, allow ourselves to be sent by Jesus to go out and to carry close to Christ those who are in need, just like this blind man. And then, once the man is close to our Lord, he asks him what he wants. Now that again is a bit puzzling because everybody around Jesus can notice that the man is blind. And why is it that Jesus needs to ask the question, is there anything more desirable for a blind man than to see again. This tells us something about the free 
desire and petition for proximity with God. God doesn't force himself upon us. He invites us to freely express the desire we have for knowing him and growing in intimacy with him. And so he wants to hear it from the very mouth of the one in need. Lord, that I may see. And very solemnly, our Lord responds and grants him what he wanted. Receive thy sight. On what basis? Because of his faith. Because the man trusted more and more that it was more than a rabbi walking by, but the true son of David, the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. Receive thy sight, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he saw and followed him glorifying God. And the conclusion of the gospel, you could reread, especially the end of the epistle of today, and the whole gospel simply focusing on the verb to see. And you will see how many times it comes up. But in the conclusion, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. So it's not just about one man recovering his sight. It's also for the multitude to see the miracle and to adhere in faith to Jesus. That is, they start to see with the eyes of their soul that this man is truly the Savior. And when you look back, you see that the apostles themselves did not understand up to then and even perhaps a bit later. When our Lord tells them about his passion in every detail, we are told by St. Luke that they did not understand. In fact, they were blind. Now, friends, this is an encouragement to us. If even the 12 chosen by our Lord, trained by him, needed time to understand the workings of redemption, then with us, if we find we are slower than we should, let us not lose hope. Let us simply listen to the voice of Christ who walks by us. Let us ask Holy Mother Church to carry us closer to him through her magisterium, guidance, sacraments, and let us eventually confess the utter need in which we are for sight. This requires humility. And you know what? Man, and modern man in particular, doesn't like that at all. We don't like to confess that we are helpless and that we need to be given our sight. So let's pray for that humility that we sh should admit that we are morally blind. And then, once healed, we become followers of the Lord, like the man in the gospel. We praise God, not alone, but as part of God's people, the Holy Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.